hey guys in this video we'll be writing neural network from scratch in python so let's get started all right guys we'll start by importing some libraries um in numpy and i'll be sharing some links as well so after this video ends you can actually go and see those links those are like amazing links to un get understanding about backpropagation so we'll start by defining a class and um, we'll define an init function in which we'll be taking layers as well as activation functions both of these things are important right you need to decide how many layers you want what will be the activation function and then let's put a check that the length of the layers should be equal to length of the activation function minus one now a question for you guys comment down below why do you think we are not taking activation function in the last layer it is because you right now don't know the problem <laughs> the problem we are trying to solve is we will be taking a sine to n pi equation and we will be trying to get our neural network estimate that now sine to n pi uh, if you want to estimate that that becomes a regression problem in order to solve a regression problem you don't need to have a softmax function or something like that a unit function in the end of the neural network is going to work so with that idea we don't have an activation function at the last layer all right now okay this will throw an error amazing now we know what are we trying to do so we'll quickly set the init function up okay now the basic setup is done we are going to check what is the if the is the number of layers is equal to activation functions plus one this is going to tell us two things one that there is no last uh, activation function specified in the last layer okay now it is time for us to initialize the weights and biases in order to do that we also need to define um weights array first and a bias array as well can have a biases cool. because we will have multiple arrays right um now we need to quickly initialize the weights so what we'll do is we'll say for i in range of length of self dot layers minus one so why do why are we doing minus one because if there are three layer of uh, if there are three layers in a neural network there will be two sets of weight right from first to second and from second to third so we need to create only two uh, a set of weights here so we'll say that um, take the self dot weights and initialize randomly now weight uh, initialization is a difficult concept in itself in itself so make sure that you read about it because it is going to help you in the long run here um, and also why do you think that we are going with a, a random initialization why are we not doing zero so these are some questions which you, you need we should uh, wonder about and if you know the answer please write down in the comments below so what i am saying is take the i plus one th layer so if you are at the layer one take the your weight should be of the size two that is the layer uh layer two number of neurons there cross the whatever number of neurons you have that should be the uh weights uh the size of the weights um for the first layer basically now um okay self dot layers i similarly we'll do it for biases biases we don't need this thing because bias usually has bias is a one dimensional thing right because you don't do multiplication with bias you do an addition all right 
now we are done the so weight initialization is done uh, the second important layer which we need to define is a feed forward so we'll take an input from the user and we will return two things we need to return the um, intermediate inputs and uh, we also need to return the output from the layers why do we need that we need this to make sure that the back propagation works because we are we don't have liberty to call something like add a grad right oh, sorry autograd that is the um, activation from uh, back propagation library in uh, pytorch we don't have that so okay so if this we can get then we can pass um then we can pass these uh, outputs from the feed forward to back propagation so what we can say we can say that back propagation is going to take the ground truth that is y and also it needs the output from the layers it needs the intermediate inputs for the chain rule and that should be it if we can pass these things to back propagation then back propagation should be able to return us the dw's which we can use for updating the weights and the db which we can use to update the biases awesome so this these things are done um after that we need to write a training loop so we'll start with you know writing the training loop because it is the simplest so we'll say that we'll define epochs and also a learning rate so we'll start by defining some um, defaults here now question for you guys why do you think that the batch size is always the power of 2 it is because um because of the, how the hardware is there the gpus are there i am not going to get into details of it but um you can read about it or maybe we can talk about this in some other video so for every epoch this will be my iterator actually not the iterator but the pointer that way from where i should read the input so i need to create batches of um the inputs so i'm going to say something like this from i to i plus batch size similarly i will do for y as well okay i hope this makes sense and now we will change the position to i plus batch size okay and now we will ask our feed forward layer to take these things and give us the outputs okay after we get these outputs we will do a back propagation here this will pass y batch will pass output from layers and will pass intermediate inputs and that's all now whatever these two layer gives us we should use that to update the weights and the biases so we'll do that we'll say that uh, w into learning rate sorry w plus learning rate into the d weights which you have got for that um, that particular weight matrix we can extract that from here so i have zipped it so the first uh, uh d dw's first element co corresponds to self dot weights first element like that similarly we will write for um the biases update code so w plus learning rate into t bias 
for w or we can we can have maybe b here for b and d bias in zip self dot biases and db okay so now we have written the training loop really well we'll just write one more thing we'll just say that print the loss function so loss is equal to format i'll call the norm here and in here we'll call this guy minus one minus y batch all right so the training loop is ready so now we should write the feed forward function which should be pretty straightforward and then we should also write the backdrop function and then we can run this algorithm so let's start um, by writing the feed forward loop really quick so we'll say so usually when i whenever i get an uh, whenever i get an array in python and that is important to me i try to copy it because um if you like parallelize something and something happens uh python sometimes screws it up so and this has happened to me multiple times dealing with images that you get overlay or something if the um if you don't do a copy so i am going to do np.copy now you can also ask me why did not i do or i go with um array.copy or python's copy.copy .copy. that is a that is a good question so uh, np.copy basically gives me the liberty to um it gives me the, the liberty to make sure or it rather acts as a safety mechanism that if you do an np.copy you will always get a numpy array as an output nd array as an output that liberty is not or that guarantee is not there that safety is not there in uh, other copies of python all right intermediate inputs is equal to here i'll specify input to the layers now in order to do the chain rule i need to have track of these values right that is why i am like creating these arrays which i will pass to the back propagation you will see when when we do that so now for all the layers basically for now the uh, layers are gone so for all the weights i need the um i need my neural network to take the input and pass it through all the weights whatever weights we we will define the number of layers we define the similar number of weights we are going to define here so we'll say that the activation function i need to get the activation function as well right we have not defined activation function anywhere so the activation function will be i'll write a function cell dot get activations and i'll take the what should i take here i should take the self dot activation layer um, array which i have defined here and i'll take that element which i'll be defining here that uh, for example what should be the activation function for the first layer what should be the activation function for the second layer the last layer activation function is a unit anyways because we are trying to solve a regression problem here so then we since we um get the activation function we will try to append this here where we'll say that take the weights dot weights take the transpose of it and then do a dot product with whatever input you have and then add bias to this now why have we uh, why have i gone with dot t and not np dot transform uh, it is because that dot t is much more safer than np dot transform you can read about it in stack overflow or something it'll be it'll be easier so now then uh, that is the output of 
uh, of the layer which i am getting now the input to the next layer will be this this output which i have um, which i got and i'll encapsulate that in the activation function and that will be the input to the second layer right so activation function will take the output from layers and this will become the input to the layer all right now the intermediate input i also need to cool so the feed forward function is done now we will quickly write the back propagation function uh, back propagation function can be a little bit daunting that's why i'll tell you to um, I'll, I'll post some links in the description so make sure that you go and visit those links it will be a great read there so just um and uh, i mean I'm, i thank to the author of that those links who have um written the book and have given to us for free so make sure that you check those things out so what we are doing here is that we want to calculate deltas for all the uh for all the weights right for all the layers so uh, deltas means mean basically that you are trying to uh, um, see that how much the output the cost function gets affected by the intermediates input and subsequently the the exact input which you are giving to the neural network and the objective is to minimize the cost cost function so with that objective we go forward and we say that now this will be in a reverse order right we because back propagation will start from the last layer so now the last the the last delta will be the with respect to the output of the neural network and the um the cost function right so this is the first equation of back propagation uh, so there are usually four equations of back propagation you can check that out so we'll say that take the ground truth subtract with the intermediate inputs minus one so this is the activation function uh, based input of, of the last layer so uh, after the last layer uh, so we got output from the last layer and last layer's uh, output was encapsulated in the unit function so we want to extract that and then we want to uh, subtract with the ground truth and this will be my this will be my loss function and then I'll multiply this by the derivative. So I need to write a function here. So so I'll take the derivative of, of the activation function. So for that, I need to call the activation function minus one. And now this is going to return me a lambda so i will mm, encapsulate everything so i need to pass the argu argument to it so my argument is going to be the output from the layers minus one now this might seem a little bit confusing that's why i'm recommending that on, on the here in the down in the ticker you can also see a link which i have posted or you can also go the, and check out in the description that uh, where to go and uh, you can read more about back propagation if you if you have confusion here because i want to keep the video short and i don't want to talk about back propagation in too much detail here although if you want a video on back propagation we can have a detailed discussion on back propagation where we discuss hinton's paper you know we uh, we can have a series of lectures on back propagation where we start from big uh, very basic ideas and then we discuss papers uh, we also there is a great paper by jan lacoon where he um where he talks about um let's hold on yeah where he talks about um how can you use Lagrangian multiplier to have a theoretical framework for back propagation? That is also an amazing paper. So we can we can read that as well. We can have a discussion on that. So let me know if you if you guys really want that. I really want to get this code working really fast so that we can see um, the output, right? All right. So now we need to do the simple thing. We need to take the dot products of the deltas we are doing a chain differentiation here basically mm. okay and now i need to do this again
and I need to pass an argument to this so it will be this looks right isn't it maybe I'll just encapsulate everything okay so we have got we have calculated the deltas now we will um, check we'll get the batch size and the shape of y is going to give us the batch size right because uh, we are doing that in the training loop so the d w is going to be d dot d dot intermediate inputs i dot t float of the batch size or i d in enumerate deltas we can simply uh, similarly we can define a db as well t dot t dot The shape should always be a tuple, right? And then we can define all right. So this is also done. So perfect. So we have got our back propagation ready. Now we need to write um, code like of derivative function, get derivative function, and get activation function. So for these, I have already written the code. So this is the code uh, of the get activation function where I take the name. So you can specify the name of the activation like this. So let's say if I specify, we are not going to um, work with ReLU. The reason being because we are trying to estimate sine to n pi. And if I go with ReLU, uh, the negative values can't be estimated. It will be simply zero. So the activation function will be sigmoid and this is the function so this will return a lambda to me which i will uh, or to which i'll be passing an uh, input then similarly i have written a decay derivative activation function now all the other code is same and i'll be calling this code in this way and let's see how this code works so let's see this in action so now neural network is trading the loss is reducing very slowly the reason being we don't have got any optimizer but we hope that you know okay cool so this is a one layer deep neural network and according to universal approximation theorem uh, one layer neural network a uh, one layer deep neural network so basically you have got one hidden layer if you have that you can um, then as well you can estimate um, any continuous activation function according to universal approximation theorem so maybe if we can train for more epochs we can get a better result shall we try that so um in, so we did for thousand epochs let me see i mean let, let's just go for maybe 2000 epochs and see if that makes um any sense or we need we might also need to change some loss function or something uh, uh learning rate or something i don't know here the loss function which is uh, being used is very similar uh, simple the uh, i'm just taking the euclidean distance between the ground truth and the active uh, and the predicted value so i think it was not too much change um it it is it looks little bit better but uh, i think we need to uh, do tunings in many other hyperparameters which are there in the neural network so we are not going to do that in this video so thanks for joining guys i hope that you liked the video and uh, check out the links in the description below and make sure that you subscribe